Okay, so I ended my last video by going to create cameras and making a camera. The camera is created as a little object right here. So cute! Little tiny camera! It comes in with the name of camera 1 and best practice always dictates that we name everything. So we're going to name this camera 2. I'm going to call it Insect Cam. In order to look through it, I'm going to go to Panels, Perspective, and Insect Cam. And now if I look down at the bottom, I've got this name right here, Insect Cam. What I like to do is take this one and tear off a copy of it. So this is my Insect Cam. And then back here, I can go back to my Perspective View. In the Perspective View, I want to select my objects and move them around. In the camera view, when I use my normal camera actions, that is going to let me actually physically move the camera. So that's where the camera is now. And every time I use my Alt or Option, middle click, right click, or left click. Wait, that is left click. That's right click. Um, Every time I do that, Maya will physically move the camera. Now, what I'm really angling for here is a shot that doesn't let the viewer know that the hand is disembodied, that there's no arm attached to it. So maybe something like this would be nice. I'm also going to hit the little button with the circle in it so that I can see which portion of the screen is going to render and I can be sure that I'm not cutting off anything important. You know, I do want the insect to be the principal focus, but it would be nice if the audience could also see that it was on a hand. So maybe I'll go for something like that. Back in my Arnold render view, across the top it says that I am rendering through the insect cam shape. There's this little pull down here, perspective, insect cam shape. Yours may not automatically come up, sometimes they don't, so just be aware this is the pull down and you can select your camera name. And now when I hit play, there's my adorable insect. Great! So, I've got two things left to do. First, I want to put in some kind of a background, and second, I want to create some kind of a blur effect. So we'll do those one at a time. And I will pause the video here so you can all have some fun messing around with your cameras and seeing, you know, maybe you want this kind of a shot. That might be really cool. Think about it. You'll figure out what you want. You'll find something that works for you. Trust me, you will. Okay, when I come back, we will put in a background. And then after that, we will do a blur effect then we'll be all done.